Here's a story. At eight years old, your mother's boyfriend kills her in front of you. You're then sent to your grandmother's house, and over that time, you're beaten, abused, and sodomized by her. From prison, your father was able to send you to your aunt's house until one day you finally meet him for the first time. At 25 years old, you're reunited with your dad after he spent 18 years in prison. He then rapes you while your kids are in the room, and nine months later, you have his child, Trapping Anonymous. I, I went to tug away, but I felt the strength in his hand, and I knew he wasn't playing. And at the same time, he was calling me my mother's name. And I'm like, he gots to know this is me. He gots to. And um, once I felt that strength in his hands to where he was forcing me to, to the position he wanted me in, I asked him, could he use a robber? Not that I was giving in, but from education of robbery or rape, give them what they want. Save your life. What's good? This is Travis Anonymous. My name is Chris Dallas. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you, everybody who's been supporting, keeping the movement moving, and just keeping this viral, keeping us on them socials, and helping us get these, these traumas out, but more importantly, uh, to continue just healing in our community. There's so much to learn from these stories. There's so much to learn from our, our people. And I, I, I will go as far as to say our family, you know, this is, this is intimate. This is... This is the real deal, and um, I appreciate everybody that comes out here. You guys really don't know all the work, all the courage, everything that it takes to, you know, let these things go on. So I just ask you to keep supporting, and we'll keep giving you the, the content that I know that you need. Um, if you know somebody that has a story for us, and please don't hesitate to DM me at Chris Styles at Trapping Anonymous, and we'll be sure to get your story out there to the world. Uh, remember that the stories that you hear reflect real life. They're here to entertain, educate, but mostly keep your little homie off the streets. My name is Chris Stiles. It's Trapping Anonymous. Let's get it. How are you? Doing all right. How are you? Okay. Um, so I start every episode with what's your name and uh, why, your, why your story is important. Well, my name is Yaisa. Um, I believe my story is important to you all based on the fact that you just can never judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. And who are we to judge? You never know what that person is going through or what they've been through and what they're dealing with. Just never know. Just take some time to read. Go past the uh, cover. Go past the cover. Okay. Take me to the first 24 hours you met your father out of prison. <clears throat> what was that day like? It was great. Well, I wouldn't say it was crazy. It was anticipated, but it was also nervous. It was a nervous feeling in my stomach as well. It was a nervous feeling. Um, what did y'all do? What, was, was it like a family gathering? Was it like drinking, smoking? Was it playing? Like, what, what was the event? <sighs> trying to get to know each other because we don't he hasn't been in my life for a very long time and um it was just trying to get to know each other but i didn't really want to know i was just happy to be there but at the same time what led me there wasn't good terms so it was also an escape for me and i thought i was running to safety and what ended up happening the worst that you can imagine. Uh, he turned out to be who the newspaper said he was, a rapist. And he had no qualms about it being me, his daughter. 15 minutes, something told me not to have my daughters around him. Too long, no sitting on the laps, no hugging, no granddaughter, grandfather thing. Um, So uh, that situation happened maybe two days later, two, three days later. Um, and we had smoked a couple of blunts then, you know, because in a phone call before, yeah, I can't wait to come chat with you, you know. You come up to visit and we smoke some blunts. 
But other than that, that time I was smoking weed, so, and it was an icebreaker. But like I said, for him want to delve more into why he was gone, I didn't want to know. So it was just general conversation that we were having. Um, I had hung out with cousins because it was a long-awaited visit here to New York. I'm originally from Long Island, hadn't been here in years. And um, I came in that evening, put my girls to bed in one section of the room, and um, I slept on the floor, left the bed vacant. And um, shortly after he came in, he went to the bed. And um, he started encouraging me to get off the floor. Get up here, what you doing on the floor? You got no been sleeping on the floor, get up here. So hesitantly, I got up and I went to the foot of the bed. He urged me to the top of the bed. That's when the light bulb went off. So got to the top and I can feel my body cringe and just just, just got a natural cringe because I didn't want to be with, didn't want to be in that position. And shortly after the hands start roaming, and um, I I went to tug away, but I felt the strength in his hand and I knew he wasn't playing. And at the same time, he was calling me my mother's name, and I'm like, I he got to know this is me. He got to. And um, once I felt that strength in his hands to where he was forcing me to, to the position he wanted me in, I asked him could he use a rubber. Not that I was giving in, but from education of robbery or rape, give them what they want, save your life. You had something that would still take your life, but give them what they want. Sure, is a loss. How old are you at this time? I'm 46 now. I'd say roughly 25. Now 25 years old? Yes. I mean, I, I can't even imagine what, 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 what's going on in someone's head. Yeah. Uh, act so heinous. I mean, your kids are right there. Are your kids in the room? Um. And that's why you can have me, you can't have them. What happens after? I get up and I go to the bathroom and I fall on my knees and pray. Tell me you accepted Christ right there. What was that feeling like? A full circle because that was the same house that um, my abuse started and the only abuse I have experienced. never been abused by anybody in the streets. Nobody never took nothing from me in the streets. Straight like that. Um, yeah, I've had some deaths, but I've never been beat, robbed, raped in the streets. All my hurt has come from my family. What was your father's demeanor? What was his attitude like? What, what, how did he carry himself? Afterwards, um, the next day, I called my cousins to get out the situation just without telling my children what was going on and telling everybody. I called my aunt and I said, can you come get the girls? I want to hang out with my cousin. This particular cousin, my father didn't want me going out and it seemed like as if I turned into his girlfriend. Mm. You're not going nowhere. You, ain't, you can't go with that nigga. And my grandmother came out and told him, you can't tell that girl what to do. She grown. 
So here he is treating me as this woman. She not knowing that that's the attitude he's taking. She's wondering why her son is treating his daughter like that. Why are you telling your grown child she can't go somewhere? I did research on your father. The one Dance Railroad Rapers. 18 years in prison. The first 18 of my life. First 18 years of your life, he was in prison. 29 counts of acts of rape. They found three women. He had a kink with a switchblade. He would imitate a mark across their necks with this knife. And that's just how he got off. He would follow women from the train station to their car and meet them. He served 18 years and comes home, meets you for the first time, rapes you, then he kills his girlfriend, and now he's serving another 25 years in jail. That's the first I ever known. This is my first time hearing that, and I'm pissed. I'm also glad I walked away disease free. <laughs> wow. You walked away disease free, but nine months later, you give birth to a child. Yes. Your father's child. That's what they say. What are you thinking during this pregnancy? That you are carrying your father's child. I tried everything to get rid of her. Once the um, bond between me and the guy that I was with was broken, I tried everything laxatives, drugs. She just wouldn't go. She wouldn't go. You told me that there was a point when you were with your dad, you felt. It's sort of the love from father and daughter. In a weird sort of longing still for that connection. I guess how was it, how was it to be conflicted with those feelings and the feelings of what he's doing to you? Who knew what love really was? When that's the only way that you gave. And you got it. Mm. Where's your mother? Oh, Gigi. <laughs> I lost her when I was eight. Her boyfriend killed her. You want to talk about it? I think I need to. You were there. Always there. Just me and her. We're the only child. Also, I thought, I think my father has one that I met on social media. I think I have a brother, but my, my mother's on only child. Take me through that day your mother lost her life. Um, in a house full of people. Um, her boyfriend even had company. But I guess everybody thought it was just another one of their fights. Uh, you would think as many fights that I had to fight with her, 
many times we had to walk to the hospital together or go together. I mean, like, some, no one came to assist. But that particular night, she was planning to leave. He was planning to escape. And we had our things packed in black trash bags as if we were going washing. But she was cooking at the same time. And um, a neighbor asked for something and they made a deal and shortly after the fight started. I grabbed, my mother grabbed the knife. He took it from her, stabbed her. And that was the fight that killed her the night she decided to leave. Did you see her? In those moments? Of course. Because I tried to interfere. But this time, at such a young age, something said, don't interfere, you need to get some help. So I ran upstairs. Despite them not coming down to help, they allowed me to use the phone. So I did call the police. So I can't remember actually sort of stabbing or... I came down, but I know when I came down, I said to him, if she dies, I'll never love you again. Because that's the only man I knew to be a father. That's the only man that disciplined me. So, and um, after he stabbed her, I just grabbed her, drove her into the room between the wall and the bed and waited for the police. I was then picked up by her godmother, taken to go get some rest. Shortly after I was woken up, told my mom was gone. Eight-year-old child. Yeah. Um, I, I don't need to I mean, people talk about the thing here and that certain people are dealt and you know, we just do the best that we can. And then you hear some stories, it's like some people never had a chance. Um, I'm so empathetic to the situation. Uh, do you still love your father? I think I wanted him to show me some love after he rescued me. I thought it would be nothing but love from him. Considered that he rescued me from a situation, from jail. But he was doing that time. So that's what left the door open for that man to come into my life. Because people are gonna wonder, why would you bring your children to see your father knowing he has I didn't know. No one never really put it out there. They just, the man that killed my mother is the one that said, you know I'm not your father. Your father's been locked up. So no one would say, this is why I had to assume over the years and the amount of time you could only think murder or rape. Those were the only two things that lingered in my mind. But I never wanted to lean too hard towards rape. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, here you are, eight years old, you just lost your mother. You now go to stay with my great aunt where she was escaping to in Washington, D.C., Southeast. You tell me some stories about your grandmother. What, what ever point do you remember her? Um, I did never really live with her. Um, I've been dropped off to be babysat by my mother was, with her and my mother had a tumultuous relationship because she hadn't watched her try to run my mother over with the car. <laughs> so, um, I never lived with her. She was my next of kin. And when we went to court for my mother, and that was after that, the murder situation was happening. We had to do the custody. And um, she was my next to the kin, so technically I was to go to her. But 
I was given the opportunity or the chance to decide for myself. So I followed my mother's lead and I went to Washington, D.C. Court ordered to visit my grandmother a month out the summer. What was the situation that your father saved you from while he was in prison? And how old were you at the time? I'm going to say this probably was the first or second visit back here to New York with my grandmother. And um, she nearly took my virginity with a broomstick. Who? My grandmother. Why? She was under the assumption that at that age that I bothered with her husband in some type of way. Or he bothered whatever. I don't know. Did her husband ever make a pass with you? Anything? No. I didn't find out on to that trip. Um, the situation with my father that that's just how she is with all the women in her family. And this is your father's mother? Yes. If this is what she was doing to her granddaughter. I can only imagine how she treated your father growing up. So your father steps in and he says, you know. Well, I run away from her the next day after she did what she did. And um, if I can go into detail to tell you why, she had, she, she's, she, she's vicious with the beatings. So I was too scared to move around the house. And I had to use the bathroom. And when I slept on the on the leather couch, the pull-out couches and stuff. And um, so I urinated on myself on the leather couch that I was able to wipe the couch, but I wasn't able to change my panties. So when she came home and checked me, I was damp. So that's what made her, made me spread it. But um, no, that man never, never. He was too scared to probably go piss. <laughs> nah. So we walked from Lime Dance to? I climbed out the window the next morning. Left my little cousins there and I walked from Wine Dance to Huntington. When I got to Huntington, um, my family or people's there called back here in D.C. and said something had to have happened because that girl don't walk from Wine Dance to here. I Googled how far that location was. Five hour walk for a nine year old girl. Whatever she experienced or whatever she was walking away from must have been that evil. How was life in D.C.? It's been bumpy. It's been bumpy, but I got it. I'm from a whole different breed. What about growing up in D.C.? When you were maybe, let's say, now you're like 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh, I'm, I'm mad at everybody. Full of hate. Label that's a trouble to eat. What are some of the altercations that you get into? Everybody's fight, my fight's everybody's. What are some of the worst ones you got into? The one that took me away from my daughter that I had at 14. 14, you get pregnant? I pregnant at 13, I had her at 14. By who? A much older guy. How old were you? 25. And you were 13? Mm hmm No, was he? Yeah, I think he was. Um, much older. He was in his 20s. Was he around? Was, you know? He was around. That's the one that stepped up to the plate. Okay. So you, you, you have the child at 13, I mean, you have the child at 14. Are you, are you able to take care of the child? How, are you able to, like, how does that work? How, how are you able to be a mother? When I was asked, what did I want to do by my great aunt? I said, keep her. I thought it was replacing the love that I didn't have. It didn't turn out that way. I was still a kid. I was still running the streets. Still had a lot of anger. 
So she would just keep the child in. How would you? How would you? How would you see it? How, how would you see a child? How would you interact with your child? Were you allowed I mean, to? Of course, we run the same home. And, and she can go, I can go, but she ain't going out there in the streets. So since the streets was calling me, my aunt was keeping the kids safe. But the whole time you're bonding with my child. Um, About 16, I was taken from her completely because um, in the midst of my friend fighting, somebody got the best of my friend and I launched a brick and knocked the girl's teeth out of her mouth and um, got committed to DHS for two years, which led until I was 21. It started me off right, but I still didn't. Such as I started college at 16, had my own place at that time, got my daughter back. But I was in the streets then. I was off, the, I was off, <laughs> jumped off. <laughs> so. so just just keep telling us more about that, that period in your life and that time. Um, well, I started UDC at 16, mortuary science, thinking it was something that I could have done for my mother that I now can do for somebody else. I don't have the stomach for that now, as I'm now, and besides, I guess it was the, the hate or whatever. But um, I'm into hospitality and tourism and now, I'm such a nice person. <laughs> that, that reputation that I built back then, that wasn't me at all. That wasn't me. I'm, I'm, I'm developing 46 years old, finally developing into the woman I'm supposed to be. It took a long time, man. I had to sleep outside while my daughter slept in the house. Mm -hmm. What was that about? I don't know what I did if I came in too late or I don't know. But um, I wasn't allowed in the house. And um, my daughter slept peacefully while I slept in a vacant car. Same neighborhood right outside the building. What's your relationship like with that daughter now? We haven't, we haven't spoken to each other maybe a good three, four times since the situation with my father. As I told you, they slept in the same room, so I thought they were asleep. She was awake, as she told me once I wrote her a letter from prison, one of those sorry letters to apologize for a lot of things. And when I got to that thing, I said, I'm going to talk to you about that in person. She said, I already know I was woke. Crush me. And I don't think she knows. Because I was sacrificing myself for her. She won't even talk to me. And she got me to the point, I don't know if I'll do it again. But since I prayed to God, then my heart doesn't harden. So that if she ever needs me, so I'll be there for her. Unlike the times that I needed her and she wasn't there. That was 20 years ago. It's the last time you spoke to your daughter was 20 years ago. Seven grandchildren. And her first, she had while I was incarcerated. And that little boy has changed my life. What age was she? I was six. I can't tell you honestly. I'm say 16, maybe. Maybe 19. I'm not sure. I can't call it. And she has seven children. Yeah. She's 33. With seven children? Yes. Maybe she's trying to be a better mom than me. No proof to me that she can do it better. They all with her? They are. Same father? I can't call it. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. You don't feel like that's what she's trying to prove to herself or prove to? I mean, if if all you hear when your mother is that she's nothing but a hoe and a thief and this and that, sell drugs, use drugs, mm-hmm. of course you don't want to grow up to be like that. What do you mean by her son, your first grandson, changed your life? I knew then that I had generations behind me that I had to do something differently. And um, that's just it. And not being there for her when I was supposed to be. Is there much, relationship, much of a relationship that you had with your first daughter prior to the incident? It was just me and her. I mean, all my children like five and a half years apart. Um, I had her and her sister together, and I made sure they understood sister first. But the time away, one went, went to one grandparent, but they were separated during my incarceration. Um, I wish their sisterly bond was instilled in them like I instilled it in him, but that also has been broken up as well. Who are you trying to be Four. Do you have a relationship with any of them? My middle daughter and my son. That's it? Mm-hmm. The child that was from your father. First I <laughs> Nothing has been proven. What do you feel in your heart? I pray it's somebody else's. I have somebody that will kick my door down right now if he can get a DNA. But my cousin won't allow it, the one that has my daughter. She's had her since she was four months. She's given her something she's been missing. Was there any indications of incest when she was born? They would say, um, well, she's dark as me, but she came out with blue eyes. I had her a natural birth, so it's nothing that I did. And they would say that it's a darker version of albinoism. But it also could be my Nigerian husband, because there'd be some blue-eyed babies over there. Just in the eyes. Is she blind or she can see? Or? She can see, but it's just a, it's a certain way that she does. I can't call. I didn't have much interaction with that situation. At four months, I went to do five years. So she's been with my cousin since she was four year, four months old. I know you said that there's a possibility that it cannot be your dad. What do you feel in your heart about? That situation, like when you, if you would say, how confident would you, would you be? I'm not that confident. It's probably just the PTSD or just something that's blocking the mere fact that it could be, or just the not wanting it to be, the dread of it being. Mm. Mm. Have you ever had any quality conversation with you and her, the daughter? No. Never? Never. Do you think that she knows? Forcefully, had I had I if I had it my way, I would be her godmother. Um, but she was told during a heated argument by another family member that who she thinks is her mother isn't her mother. I'm her mother. And um that probably rocked her world. What age was was that did that happen? I'ma say roughly five to ten years ago. She's twenty. Going on twenty one next month. So they're just going back and forth and they say, you know, you know who's your, your real mother? And they tell her that. Do they tell her about the father's situation? I'm pretty sure she knows, but not by the cousin that blurted out 
I think by the one that is raising her, and ain't no telling what twist and turn she be on it because she has called herself exposing me since. How? She got mad at me and went and told somebody that I was dealing with that. <laughs> You know this is her father's child. In so many words, but I know it's more decorated than that. So, but she wasn't the first one. She wasn't the first one what? that tried to expose that situation. Like I said, I was in love at that time with someone who was incarcerated, and once I had confided in him. He was in a, in a facility where it was possible. He said, tell everybody you, you came down here and you got pregnant. Mm. So up until he came home, a little bit before I had the child, everybody believed that was his, and some still to this day believe that that may be his child. But he went, and we had gotten upset with each other while he was incarcerated. He called my aunt, and he told my aunt, you know, she told me she went up New York and this happened. Mm. My aunt contacted me. Well, he told that's not my baby, that's her, because she's city. So my aunt told me it was something I should have took to my grave. Mm. I should have never told nobody. Wow. So she wanted me to live with that heavy on my heart mm. for the rest of my life. Oh, I'm just speechless. I am, I am truly, truly speechless. Knowing I've yet to grieve for my mother. And how can I? I won't be able to grieve for my mom until I, I put that tombstone on, tombstone on the grave. Because another trip, I came up here looking for my mama, couldn't find her. She's the only one in the family without one. The night life was snatched from your mother, it was also snatched from that eight-year-old girl. It's like the life was snatched from you. What age did she pass? She was 24. How much time did you spend in prison? Off and on, more than 15. 15 years. But uh, it started at 16. I, I think this is the longest I've been off probation. And I just been, got taken off probation a couple of years ago. And, and the longest I've been out as well, because I think I was released. My last actual release probably was in 15. And um, I've had some charges since that I've been beaten. So your longest time in prison, what was it for? And how long was it? In prison as an adult, five years, larceny, and assault my officer. You told me 21 and one in a box, stabbing, shootings, you built up a reputation for fighting. Oh yeah, I did 23 and one. That's why my eyes so messed up as well. 23 and one for more than a year. With nothing but lights. Why? Sometimes you just get fed up and can't take no more. You try to buy by rules and shit, but then you get tired of people playing with you. You built up a reputation for fighting. I guess we didn't really mess with too much in there. Um, cause I don't mess with people. Yeah. I don't mess with you unless you mess with me. What was your hardest point in prison? Um, the no contact with my children. until it was forced. Uh, 
and then I, I think I may have got two visits to the point to where when I was going through a medical condition, I thought it was from the stress of not seeing my children. It was then that I was diagnosed with thyroid disease, hyperactive thyroidism, and I had to have a surgery two weeks before my release. You came with you your, son, your today. son today. Mm -hmm. Nothing like the mm -hmm. love of a yeah, son. Thank you. More. Thank you. You love his mama. Thank you, God. Despite what they may say. Total different love than the girls. Because now they daddy girls. All of a sudden. Have all the blood, sweat, tears I put in. If you could speak to them right now, what would you say to them? If they see this video, if it reaches their eyes, what would you say? Oh, first to to my my middle girl, thank you for loving me despite the distance and the time. And I thank God that she, while she was away, she was exposed to the streets and to the word. So it left no room for her to judge me. My oldest daughter, I'm here. Don't take them babies from me. Because it's the babies that I'm striving so hard for. I can take it if it's over between me and her. Not my grandbabies. Uh, the last girl. Um. I wish I would have done better with choosing your fate. Considering that you were determined to make it into the world, I wish I would have chose somebody else to get you or allowed somebody else to get you because you were my worst enemy. Somebody that's supposed to love me as family. To my son, I'm going to do better, and it's only up from here. Um. Bad of homelessness. Rough about. Um, I think I lost my place. That five years that, and when I came home. I came like twelve, so I think I've been homeless since. Just gained housing ten years ago. My baby. What was the what was the average day like on the streets being homeless? Uh, I didn't really have no fears. It was I was just in survival mode. Um Did you battle drugs? Yes, I did. Well, I didn't battle them. I went to them to help me cope with what I was dealing with and tried to control them from controlling my feelings. What you use? PCP. Hmm. What was the roughest time on the streets for you of home, being homeless? Sleeping in the storage room until I was eight and a half months pregnant with my son. Uh, nobody calling, asking, do you need to eat or do, would you like a shower? Nobody called me when we had that blizzard. 96, I believe. I made mean, 2000 something, one of them. Nobody called me, I think it was 14, 15, we had a visit. I can't remember, PTSD. But nobody called to say if I was all right. But the worst was getting evicted from the store she owned Because it was Christmas time, I had nowhere to go. There was nobody there because it was the vacation, I would assume. And I'm running the buck in there, jumping gates back and forth because I got to go to the gas station to get me some cigarettes. And they come back to work. You got eviction notice. 
You told me you would sell your body just for a place to sleep at night. Yes, it's happening during that time, yeah. You would probably just, the, the fact that you could just even still stand up and just keep your faith in God, be a mother to a child, and it was the one that you battled. How do you do it? Well, first, I don't, God's grace. God, that's all I can say, because I fall short many a time. And I don't know if I get the strength to get back up. But I do. You have any regrets? Nah. You gotta go through something to get to where you gotta go. Where you supposed to be. And I think I passed the test. That's why I'm here. To get my testimony. Hate your father? I don't have no family. This is something that you can tell the young man, maybe that eight year old girl, what would it be? Fight. Keep fighting. This is Travis Anonymous. My name is Chris Dallas. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're all right, you're all right. You're all right. You're all right.